Welcome to the Town of Fairfield Shellfish Commission meeting, June 8th, 2022. Um, call to order present are John Short, Tim Macklin, Bruce Keithner, Sean Cohen via Sarasota phone call, and Tim Bishop and Sarah Nisi. We have a quorum. All right. Bills and communications. Approval of the draft minute, meeting minutes of May 11th, 2022. Uh, I make a motion. Well, I didn't have anything. Any changes, questions, corrections? Good to go. Tim Macklin yes. makes a motion. Second. Bruce Keefner seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Committee reports. Clam relay planting. On Wednesday of last week, we planted 50 bags of clams, uh, 30 bags of top necks, 20 bags of cherry stones, somewhere between 7,500 and 9,000 clams, I think it was, um, you know, three days before our clam clinic. Clams dug in fine. People caught clams during the clinic. We will now monitor the bed to see how it does. Um, if we feel that we have the money, maybe we'll do another market buy before July 4th. And then um, after July 4th, we'll consider doing a relay off our natural bed to really stock up the bed because we've sold a lot of permits. Anyone have anything about clam relay and planting? Nope. Nope. All right. We'll go to water and habitat quality. Bruce, it's all you. Uh, we had a what the number of days closed? What? Say we're open. Yeah. Uh, as of May 31st, we were open 101 days and only closed for six. Beautiful. And we are open right now. Uh, we had a little scare Thursday <laughs> night before the <laughs> clinic. Uh, Friday, we made looked at many rain gauges, <laughs> and it was determined that we got 0.98 inches, 0.02 away from being closed for the clinic. So, um, you know, we're we'll just we got lucky. Got I guess. Lucky. Hey. Oh, we got, got lucky on the weather. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, Did the rain get you on with the rain gauge? Is that Tim? Is that rain gauge? How's that doing? I was going to give that update. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, it's currently still uh, not working for rain. Uh, all the other sensors are working. I emailed uh, Scientific Sales where I purchased, where we purchased it, uh, questioning whether they could provide technical support or diagnostic troubleshooting, and uh, I have not heard back from them yet. Uh, I sent that email this morning. Uh, if not, I'll just reach out to the manufacturer. I would imagine we have at least a one-year warranty. So. Um, since I'm on the topic, um, when that happened, uh, let's say Friday, uh, building department, uh, as I had sent an email, um, building, went, building, uh, maintenance department went up on the roof just to check it, um, make sure it, you know, didn't get hit by a seagull or something. And, uh, everything looked fine to them. Uh, and it was the guy who installed it back in, uh, uh, when it was February, I think, um, so he knew kind of what it looked like. Everything's fine. So I'm, I'm kind of stumped. Uh, obviously, the Wi-Fi is working because I'm getting a signal with all the other sensors. So, uh, you know, more more info to come. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, the water looked pretty good. Yeah. Right? It was nice and clear for yeah. the clinic, and mm -hmm. the harbors looked good. So we're looking for Okay. Um, we're very, we're lucky And another aspect is that there was a sewage spill in Milford that closed a lot of the commercial beds down there. And we just got the clam order in. They were able to pull them from Fairfield and Westport. So, um, everything worked out. All right, we'll go to permits and access. So, who wants to, um, do that? You want me to just go in? Okay. As of May 31st, we have 272 right. permits. 
beautiful. That's we're doing well. Yeah. I mean, a hundred or ninety eight more and we break our record and it's only June eighth. Yeah, so. and that probably doesn't factor in and I don't think we sold a ton at the clinic, but I don't think it factors in. Right. Okay. So a lot of people said they would buy online and then we got some pretty good press from like Brenda Kupchek yeah. posted on her personal page and her um Brenda Kupchek her Fairfield page about the clinic and that and said that I got the caught the clams in Fairfield, get a permit. So she put a bunch of hashtags up there. Uh, so we might get some more permits out of that. So we should we should at least we'll definitely break three hundred, you know. It'd be nice if we could yeah. get up towards four, but um Keep climbing, moving in the right direction. You know, we've brought in forty seven hundred dollars in permit fees so far. All right. Southport Beach reopening. Let's we'll go to Bruce. Uh, More Sean. So Cindy and I went and sampled a couple of weeks ago, brought it up to Milford, uh didn't get anything back from them yet, but you know, we got the sample in for last month. Okay. Sounds good. That's it really on Southport Beach okay. reopening. Commercial shellfish regulations, no report. Oyster bed development, I'll go with Tim on this. Um, we have, I guess this falls under development or downwellers. You want to talk about the, well, it's downwellers. Development would be like shell collection. Yeah, shell collection is still going. Still collecting from a few restaurants. Um, real quick, we I just got an email from uh, Taisha Cole. I haven't actually had a chance to really dig into it and respond to her, but she's moving to Ohio, so she's not um, going to continue her program, but she does have a small grant that she's was asking if we would want to take that over uh, and split it with uh, curbside, curbside Compost, which is the other uh, the company that she's partnered with. Um, and one of the other things she mentioned was that they just released the state guidelines on shell recycling and that uh, you're not permitted to recycle shells from any restaurants that import oysters from Europe. So I'll need to just double check that. I know that um, Bryac does not. Um, we're just doing Bryac. I'll have to talk to... Um, Nordic fish, because they might actually get some from overseas. So I'll talk to them uh, ASAP. And then moving forward, anybody else that we bring on the program, I'll make sure that we ask. And then Tim Bishop. Yes, precious sir. Precious oysters. Precious oysters. Uh, sorry. Yeah, precious oysters. Uh, Rachel Precious, uh, I believe she's running an operation out of Westport. Um, kind of a, a high-end Oyster service, um, for, you know, I think at home and, and restaurants and whatnot um, seems to be have have a large volume um, of shell. She's been giving most of them to Norm um, uh, with, with you know all their empties through processing, and uh, I reached out to her. Uh, she's interested. Her question uh, to me at the time was. Um, would we uh, still take shells from out of state or Canada? Um, and that was, uh, I, I told her I would get back to her with an answer after speaking with uh, with the commission. Um, but it, I, I don't know exactly her volume, but it sounds like a sounds like a lot, which could only help us. Um, I told her let's try and set up a Zoom, uh, her and I, and, uh, and you know maybe some of you uh, folks. Um, just to kind of see if we could work together. It might help her out getting rid of shell and obviously help us out. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from her as of Friday. But it seems like a good lead. Yeah. And then um, Milford Oyster Festival contacted me and wanted to know if we wanted their shell this year. So I didn't respond until I talked to you guys. Might as well. We've been done it for so a few years. We probably want it, but Tim usually... Um, either Tom or Ed, I think it's Ed, drives the dump truck down and leaves it there for the day. They fill it with a shell, and then he picks it up at the end of the day. So you'd have to discuss right. with Ed if he has um, the ability to do that this year. Okay. You don't have any dates, do you? Um, I, it didn't have a date in it, so I'll have to look it up and see when it is. Okay. I think it's, in, it's usually in August. All right. Okay. And one last thing on oyster bed development. 
We have to pull the bags down at E Yacht Yard. And oh, so we are going to talk about that. Oh, E Yacht Yard. Okay. Yeah. With the spat on shell and put those in. We can put those in. We can put them in Mill River, or we can bring them over to Ash Creek. Um, or Sasko, or you not even want to bother? I can't put them on. I don't know if we can put them on Sasko because right now, um, Yee Yacht Yard is prohibited. So, gotcha. If they're conditional restricted or relay, so okay. it's it's prohibited for now as of I think it was May fifteenth or something like that. Even if they're below a certain size and we're closed, yeah, you know, I think they're probably they could be. We'll see. Yeah. I haven't said them. No, for August twentieth. All right, August twentieth for Oyster Festival. I don't think it's worth putting them on Sasko. I think we should put them on Ash yeah. Creek then. Because we can monitor them and see what yeah. happens. Yeah, so we'll just move them to Ash Creek. Yeah. All right. We've got to pick a date to do that. I don't really want to do that. Uh, I'm just going to start doing it. Okay. It's too hard to get everyone together. I figure it's just take 10 bags at a time. And got it. Do you know how many of us are in there? There's about 60. Okay. So I might even... Do we want to keep doing that? Just as... So I, I was thinking about it this year... I think we should cut it at least cut it down to 40 bags and just do it on um, the wood dock, the, the wood dock, and not the not the service dock. Yeah. Um, just because it's so it's a bunch no, of work. So I say we just do the one dock. 40 bags is good enough. Got it. Um, you know, unless someone feels like really getting into it. So with all the other stuff we got going <laughs> on. Use the boat, our boat, right? No. Not for that. Yeah. No, we, we can't. Because oh. we pull them out after hours. We can only use a boat till like 2.30. Oh. And if you get conservation involved and all that, it just doesn't it's work out. Yeah. Um, so we normally just pick them up, pull them out, throw them in the back of the pickup truck, bring them to Ash Creek, sled them out there, and dump them in. Or even with... And I'm putting my boat in soon. I might just take a few loads in there of the tide mill. It's too hard to do it during the day. I mean, I can't do it. So. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to communications. Sean? So, Bruce? Yeah, so I'm here. So okay. since the last meeting, we promoted really two things in social. The first was the Rack Lines article, which got a little bit of, we got a couple of likes. We got one share off of it. We did get um, the usual amount of likes, which is what we get on posts promoting the Clam Clinic. We got a ton of shares. So we got almost 30 shares on the three posts promoting the Clam Clinic, which is a lot because that essentially pumps out our post, not to everybody. That's, that stopped years ago, but at least to the people that are high up in somebody's algorithm that they found out about it. And I don't know whether or not, you know, the informal poll anybody else took this weekend. There were a lot of people that said they were on, that told me they were unaware of the event and they saw it on social media. So hopefully that's, the um, awareness side of things is, is bearing fruit from Facebook especially. We've got much more followers there. But it seemed to me, good crowd, fair number of first-timers, seems like our word was out. Yeah, I think that um, it was perfect, the amount of advertising. I think, you know, next year, obviously, Brenda will put it in her newsletter. Is she up for election? <laughs> but whoever it is, it'll... One more year. So she'll probably put it in the newsletter since she was out there. But, you know, I think the, the amount of people that came that got the message was perfect. So, what, Is there anything on our website, if you go to Federal Shellfish Commission, it, it doesn't look good because it talks about things on 2019. And then when you go to a website that is stale, it says, sends a message that the organization yeah, a, is not active. Right. So, it's a Tim Bishop, was that website not really working for a while or something? I'm not sure that it wasn't working. Um, the town's already uh, retained a uh, contractor to um, – we're, we're, the entire town's getting a whole new website, and it'll go by department. So, um I could I could clean it up. Uh, I I actually haven't gone onto it uh, much really. I I just kind of use the department as kind of a the homepage. Um, but that's something uh, when that time comes, to, we should talk about as far as uh, what we want on there and how to how to organize the shellfish section. 
this is not unique to shellfish. This is true for other commissions. They have a very, very hard time updating their website. I think they're doing a major overhaul of everything. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We're, the they don't the have easy entire access. town's website is getting thrown out and, and starting from zero. Scratch. I think we can all have a chance to actually put input about what we want on our specific committee. I mean, it, yeah, nothing user friendly on there yeah. now. No. <laughs> Keeping it current, it's, yeah, is my it's pretty point. terrible. I mean, I I posted yeah. the uh, the flyer for the clinic on on the conservation department, you know, homepage. Um, but yeah, it's it's impossible. It's really difficult and to navigate, and uh, even just to find, you know, agendas and everything else is it's terrible. So uh, hopefully, with the new the new, uh, it's not even a revamp; it's a replacement. Um, it, it should be a lot better. I've seen some. Um, some the, the company's uh, portfolio from other towns. It's a big difference. That sounds good. Yeah, we used to use Peach Jar to promote, and it would go to all the schools in Fairfield. I think we paid a certain amount per school, and uh, you know we did get more people at a couple of these things. But it starts to get unmanageable when you get above a certain level, and I think we we're just at the point where it was perfectly manageable. Everything was smooth. There was no fights. There was no arguing over parking spaces, no arguing over rakes and all that. So I think we're good. Um, so we probably had, what, 250 people? Yeah. That's right. 250. All right. Um, so go ahead. Two th yeah, sorry. Two th if anybody has uh, Judy Benson from uh, Sea Grant and Rack Lines wanted a picture, so um, just email... John or I get pictures if you have them, and then we'll forward them to her. Um, or we have, I think I gave everyone access to our Google Drive. You could put them on there. People use Google Drive. And then, um, Sean, did you get the, the two winners that won the two big gift cards? Is there any way you can post that? On, I can't do um, Instagram. I could do Facebook, but I just figured it would be good to give Doric Fish and uh, Penny Bene uh, tag on those since they donated larger prizes. Um Absolutely. You know something? I saw the pictures, and I I, uh, I, I can get them up. Sorry about that. Great. I didn't no, know if there was okay. a comment on about them. Yeah, no problem. Just want to give those guys uh, a shout-out since they donated large. Yep. Uh, the two winners that's were very, very, very appreciative and that's very easy. excited. And, uh, all said how uh, just a great time they had. So. All right. Um, that's it for communications. Yep. And we'll go to Downwellers. Tim? Uh, we have uh, the Downwellers. We installed a new two-horsepower pump uh, that's been running for about uh, a week and a half. Uh, what, 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 what kind of pump? Oh, it's a two-horsepower a two pump. Yep, it's a Hayward two-horsepower pump. It's a pool pump, basically. So the town came down and... Um, Rewired it for more power. The pump's hooked up. It's working. Uh, the downwellers are full of water. They're, everything seems to be running smoothly. We just now need to get our oysters in there. So there's probably about 60 bags of the oysters that we harvested off of the um, spat collectors last fall uh, that we need to move into, or basically we need to sort first. So we need to get our sorter down, get them sorted, and then... Um, all the small ones, I think, probably will take priority about going to the downwellers. If we have anything that's large, we'll probably put those on, in Ash Creek or Titan Mill. Um, can we put them on Sasko or no? Okay. Uh, so that needs to happen as soon as possible uh, just because they're starting to grow, and they're going to start to grow through the mesh of the bag, and it's harder to deal with them that way. So we're hoping to do it this weekend. I don't know if anybody's around this weekend to help out with that. Hey, we'll send out a text. If anyone's around, just yeah. stop down. Just, we're going to try to get some volunteers also. Yeah, we have a, probably about 20 people that signed up at the Clam Clinic just, you know, to our volunteer list. So we'll put out a blast to them and see if we get people show up. So on that note is I've been keeping the um, oyster sorter washer mechanism at my warehouse in Stratford, but I have a very large, uh, equipment delivery coming, which is going to take up the whole warehouse, and I actually have to move that thing. It's not our machine. It's being borrowed from Chuck Vane's of Charles Island Oyster, 
And he said, we could keep it as long as we keep it somewhere safe. So we really can't tie it up outside anywhere because it's, you know, it's got a motor on it yeah. and we can't just let it rot away. Mm -hmm. Can't take the chance of someone seeing all that stainless steel and thinking that would be a great piece of scrap metal. So I was hoping maybe, Tim, we could get the possibly, if, it, if you could make this happen, you don't have to, but if you could, just get those those outboards out of that trailer and some of the other things that have been in, in there since I've been on the commission, like a table. There's a table back there, a bookcase. It's just sucking up the space. It would be a great spot for that oyster sorter. I did send an email um, to Ed. He was actually off the uh, second half of yesterday and today, so um, I'll stay on him about that. Uh, I did talk to Tom. Uh, he said those motors haven't run in 20 years, so it uh, should be an easy decision um, to, uh, to to clean out that box, uh, at least for that stuff. So um, I don't I don't see a problem unless Ed has uh, some really attachment to those uh, things, but we can get them out of the way. We should put that the sorter in there. All right. We, good. Um, would we ever want out? Can we offer to purchase that from him at some point? So do we even know who owns those trailers? Does the town well, own them or are they leased? The sorter. The sorter, oh, the sorter. and the trailer. <laughs> so here's the thing is we got the sorter right now. Yeah. And I'm afraid it's like I think it was a year ago or something, Chuck called me and he's like, Do you have my sorting machine? I said, Yeah. He goes, Oh, I knew it was somewhere. He goes, As long as it's in a safe place and in, you know, inside yeah. or whatever, just keep it. Right? So I don't know if he's ever going to want it back, but I'm afraid that if we offer to buy it from him, he may say he wants it back. So I'm just waiting for when he comes to us and says, hey, you, do you want to buy it from got me? It. Okay. So Fair we enough. got it right now. If we you want to buy it. one, I think they're like six to $8,000 for that thing. Yeah. I did see so, when I was up at that uh, conference, they had ones made out of PVC, which I don't know if they're any cheaper, but I can contact yeah. that company. I, I Assuming Smaller these things are all handmade and it's all yeah. labor money. Yeah. So, you know. Um, I'm sure there are a lot, though. Yeah. So we do have use of it until Chuck decides he wants it back. Okay. And then at that time, then we'll make the offer. But mm -hmm. i say we just leave it. As and it means is. once we take clams over to the tide mill, they never leave. Right. But they can leave. We can harvest oysters out of there in the winter so how tide mill works or how mill river works is during the boating season from may 15th until i think november 15th it's called con conditional restricted relay where it's basically turns over to um, prohibited and then from november 15th until may 15th it goes to restricted relay which is a two-week period so if we put oysters up in Mill River, Tide Mill, and we wanted to do a relay, if we wanted to relay those out of there, we could close for two weeks. If we wanted to get a small dredge, which we have one in the trailer, and just drag up some oysters and say fill up, you know, 50 baskets with them or something, you know, we put them where we could get them easy and they wouldn't be attached to anything. We could harvest those and plant them on Sasco if we wanted to. But the truth is, they're probably doing better work over in the harbor mm -hmm. than they would on Sasco because I think our, I mean, our survivability rate on Sasco is probably 10% with the shifting sands. And, you know, an oyster, when it's not stuck to something, it just flops around until it gets covered in sand. So, um, yeah, but they're cleaning the water. It's, it's, the nitrogen in Southport Harbor is seaweed. It's, that ribbon seaweed is yeah. just. Well, they're, the main thing they're doing, they do clean the water and all that, but they're spawning. So it's providing spat to our beach in that Sasco. And every so often we do get a really good set. And that's when everyone's like, oh, my God, a few years ago I was picking up oysters all over. It's yes, because three years earlier or four years earlier we had a great set. And they grew to adults and you were able to get them. And then we haven't had a good set in a few years. We get some set, but not like we did that yeah. one time, which was like blowout. But that was relates to, I think, the hurricane. So, you know. Um, all right. Downwellers, anything else? Um, we did extend the hose on the downwellers. We put a longer hose on it also. 
and uh, we decided on the pool pump. Tim wanted to use a pool pump from the beginning, and we probably should have, but we went to Norm Bloom's facility in New Haven, and that's all they use there is pool pumps. So, we'll see how it goes. He never we'll did. It, so far, so good. Yeah. All right, reports from the Conservation Department. Do you want me to just do this, Tim? You want to do it? Shellfish fund balance $32,186.12 as of May 31st. Um, that's probably going down a little bit. We bought clams and supplies for the clinic. Also, if anyone has receipts for anything they bought for the clinic, anything they bought for the clinic, if you want to be reimbursed, um, either take pictures of them and email it to Joanne or walk in here and hand an envelope to Joanne with your receipts marked off. If you pay tax on it, uh, I don't like that, but, you know, still accept some of that. Um, or you could just eat the tax as a donation to the state. Uh, shellfish permits, like we said, 272 through May 31st. Obviously, there's more than that. Um Shellfish closure period, Bruce went over it, 101 days open, 50 days closed. And the budget status is, is the same as it's been, or, you know, status quo. Okay. So, all right, old business, the 2022 Spring Clam Clinic. First things first, did everyone have a good time? Yes. Was anyone overworked? Not a, not a bad review. All right. Did anyone on the commission actually take home a clam? Yes. You did? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was I thinking later in the day, me, but... <laughs> I was thinking, man, I got to I gotta send out a text or a, a Facebook post yeah. and say, can someone invite me over for dinner? I don't have any clams. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I heard from friends who got a bunch of clams. And, you know, they used to go, you know, we had stuffed clams and clams to clean all the people were. Really thrilled. I mean, some people came up to us and said, "Oh, what restaurant is sponsoring this? Yeah, you know, or what organization is doing this, or how much is chowder?" Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought the way we had the Shellfish Commission big red tent, then we had the other table set out with shelves and spat collectors and things, and then literature and signing up for permits, and then chowder over on the other side, and the rakes all set out in ice. It was took up a lot of space and made it look like we were a big organization with a lot of people. <laughs> so, you know the tent, the story on the tent is, I was at a regatta at, um, down at Mercer in Jersey, you know, and uh, I see this tent, and it's a blue color, and it's beautiful. I'm like, that's the tent we have to get. So we got the red one, and with the sides, with the windows, and put all our logos. We have the nicest tent out there, I swear. <laughs> if you go to an, all these rowing regattas, have all their tents, but our tent is like the best. Like it just pops. And but if you read, I don't know if anyone read through all the Facebook stuff, but there was a comment on there that how the person loved the event and how well run it was, and it did. I mean, we set it up quick. Everything went well. Yeah. And it was taken down. There was not one piece of trash or anything left on the beach. It was exactly as we found it. So, I mean, I think we did a great job. Um, I think, and, and I also liked it. I would say about 80% of the people there were under 12. <laughs> you know, yeah, there was a lot of young families. A lot of kids. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of fascinating to look, look out and see all these tents and all these rakes and all these people out there, yeah. and then two hours later, no tents, no people. Just like we were never there. <laughs> I know that a lot of people love the chowder. Yeah, the chowder. a lot of good chowder. They all want the reviews. recipe. They can't have it. <laughs> secret. <laughs> that's, can't that's get it. Postcarded secret. <laughs> I think maybe next year we should have a sponsor for that tent. Yeah. Well, I think I think we can get there. Uh, but yeah, it went really well. Everyone did a great job. So. And we had just the right amount of chowder. Just the right amount. There was none. Did you have any left? No. No. There was, there was no chowder left. So. That's the little kids just going to town on it. Little kids that you don't think would eat that kind of stuff or just like. Well, some of them really like. Yeah. Some of them weren't sure. Yep. No. 
my son was one of them. He was the first time he ever had clam chowder uh, at age eight, and uh, he's still talking about it. So nice. he, had, uh, he had a great time. My daughter is six, and my uh, son is eight, and it was our first one, obviously. And they had fun digging for the clams, and and uh, they helped my wife steam them when they, we, we got home, and it was it was a blast. So nice. uh, yeah, like I said in the text, everyone did an awesome job. And uh, we look forward to the next next year. Yeah. So we can share the recipe with you, Tim, but not on this phone call. Not on the, not on the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put it on the record. No. Ancient shellfish secret. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, 2022 in the books for the clinic. Um, we have done in the past these pop-up clinics. If anyone feels like they're really bored and they want to get a few people to set up the tent and put it up on the beach and try to sell some permits, go go right ahead. But I don't think that's anything oh, necessary. Know. I like that. So, all right. Uh, and we everyone here, as long as we have everyone, everyone knows what to do for next year. So it'll be a lot easier. The only thing that we failed at is we don't know where the heck our banner is. Um, Disappeared. It I could be. Some, I saw banners rolled up later on. Yeah, no, they went to one. Yeah, those are nice, but the, the one that like has like the information. Possibly the economic down. development. We should probably check with them. Um, Who puts those up over there? Is that Parks? That's and economic right? development. Oh, okay, gives, does it for Parks? Got parks it. and Rec does it for them, I think. Got it. So they take. Worst it case scenario is we just may have a new banner made next year. Make another one. You know, the more the one we have is kind of it's old school. We might need an updated banner okay. anyway. Right. Agreed. All right. Uh, new business is the. New application for 1143, 1155 Saskia Hill Road, and uh, it's 117 pages. You all got it in your email. Mm -hmm. I think this is for the seawall and structures basically onshore, but there's something in there that does um, concern us, which is construction period, which will t start in the spring of 2023 if all is approved and go for a minimum of two months according to what it says in here which could really adversely affect um, the 2023 shell fishing season recreational shell fishing season so um, I don't want to discuss it too much tonight because we're all put a lot of work in in the last few weeks and have a lot of work ahead of us in the next few weeks so I'm going to go over, I have the paper application now. It's much easier for me to read. Um, so I'm going to go over it and then uh, see what we have to do, and we'll work on a response. It's basically going to be pretty much the same response as before, except not concerning anything in the water. But we really want to try to push the construction um, period. So to the winter. To the, yeah, mm -hmm. after November. Yeah. So if it's November through Fall. March, we don't really care. We do, we do care, but there's a lot less people clamming at that time. And if we do get, if the bed will be shut down during construction, that's when we would want to shut down. Yeah. Um, because there is the possibility of when they're pulling pilings and that, that that mud c contains a lot of bacteria, and they may automatically shut us down during that construction period. So we want to make sure that that's taken care of. I'll talk, I'm going to talk to Dave Carey at Aquaculture and see if he can stress that to the state. Um, anyone have anything they want to talk about on that new application from RACE? Yes, yes um, there will be a meeting with Deep, with Colin, who is the Deep representative for all permits in the town of Fairfield. And that meeting will be at 11 o'clock. Uh, the, the, loca the meeting locations will be determined. Uh, and it will be harbor management, shellfish, and probably a property owner, and uh, deep, of course. What, uh, do you know the date of that yet? Yes. July, Wednesday, July 7th. Wednesday, July 7th. And it's probably just going to be John or one person, because the reason, the reason yeah. being, Colin doesn't want a big crowd for mm -hmm. one thing. Also, if they do happen to have part of it uh, over opposite the uh, South Wharf, yeah, looking at the sand, 
July 7th is a pretty hectic time to say some people have to park down there. And even parking over at Pasco uh, is tricky. Yeah. We could probably park on the property and walk down there. But, but yeah, anything. It makes sense just to have one representative. It's, it's one rep. Yep. And the details will, will follow. Uh, Jeff Stedman uh, is going to be is coordinating this. And we'll, uh, Will you be able to make the it? Details on to John. Yeah. As of now, I mean, all I do is work. So. <laughs> well, it's kind of important now. This, this <laughs> Working <laughs> income is, you know, vital. But this would be a good <laughs> opportunity, I think, to talk firsthand to Colin and explain to him our concerns. I don't you know, know, our concern about this is physically when you're standing there. This is where. Right there. Yeah. Can you see the calendar and see if there's is that the seventh? That's June, that's right? That's, that's July, Wednesday. What, what would you like to know? July seventh is a Wednesday. July seventh is a Thursday. Is a Thursday, but it's out no, only. No, excuse me. It's, it's what I think it's the eleventh. You said I thought, which is a Monday. July 11th. 11th. I thought it was. Well, either the 7th or the 11th, it doesn't matter because it's still before our monthly meeting. So I'll probably want to at least discuss with Tim and maybe Bruce um, to have. I'd like to have a little cheat sheet with me mm -hmm. so that I know what I'm yeah. talking about, like some questions to ask. Because sometimes I may be talking to someone and we get off the subject. And I might forget to ask an important question. Got it. So if, maybe we just have a little get together. Yeah, if if I've got two different dates written down here, the sixth and the seventh. So I need All to right. confirm. So it does, it's still before the meeting. So we'll have to just get together right. and just have an index just put it on an index card so I know yeah. what I'm talking about and sound. Well, and and I think we want a coordinated response okay. between all parties. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That week is the week of July 4th, so I don't know if you want to meet the week before that, yeah, 27th before probably. That. Well, well, we'll be working together on some of the projects. Oh, yeah, so we can talk then. Okay, cool. All right. All right. And then um, I did go to the Harbor Management Commission meeting last month. Um, Sarah, do you know when the meeting is? This is the third Thursday, right? At 4.30? All right. If you're around, I don't know if you. Well, sorry, say again. The, the um, I think it's the Harbor Management. It's the third Thursday of the month at 4:30. Third Thursday. <laughs> so I didn't realize that until. So the 23rd. Yeah, the third, oh, this is the third Tuesday of the month. Oh, Tuesday. third Tuesday. That's yeah. okay. So third that Tuesday. would be one to the 21st. So of if, June. If you guys are available. You want to go to the meeting? I'll try to make myself available. I should because they'll be discussing, do. probably discussing this. We can look at their agenda and see what's on it. The Tuesday, the twenty first. If you don't want to go, you don't have to go. <laughs> or, or you can always. Go I'm talking it. to Bruce, by the way, <laughs> whose wife is the chairman of the commission, chairwoman, chairperson, who calls in by phone or does go to some of the meetings. You can do either. No, she was on the phone last time I went. Oh, because she had COVID. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's right. It's very hard to do the meetings when the chairperson is on the phone <laughs> and you have someone else who's trying to, like, pick the people to talk. Yeah. It's, and he wasn't picking them. Yeah. It's tricky. Yeah. All right. Uh, the 21st. Anything else on Sasco Hill application? No, for the moment. Nope. Okay. Informational. Uh, just a quick side note: the hats are ready, though the red the hats that we were supposed to have for the commission came in today. So I'll be picking those up if anybody wants an official shellfish commission. Hat and already. at this time, everyone has like a hat and some kind of shirt, and that. We right? have plenty of shirts. If anybody needs a shirt, let me know. Okay. Um, I thought it looked great. Everybody. Yeah. And we'll have the hats, like I said, or come. I'm gonna pick them up on Friday. Yeah, we got a great picture um, with, with Tim and Sarah in their blue shirts. Yeah. And then Brenda in the middle, and then the six commissioners in the red shirts. So, if if anyone feels Merch that that up. picture has any quality to it, we can get it 
um, made into <laughs> something like that, which is a picture of us looking out at something. <laughs> <laughs> but not of our face. Right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's see. So we'll go to other. So it seems like we had plenty of rakes. Some of them are a little weak in the where the handle attaches to the basket part. I stacked up all the rakes. We still have tons of rakes, so I don't think we need to buy any new ones at the moment. Agreed. Um, we didn't even hand them all out. I feel like there was like ten, at least ten. Yeah, we didn't. So we did. More we left. gave them out sparingly though this yeah. time. We, Which I think past, is fine. Oh yeah. Yeah. In the past, we've. You know, a whole family has four people have taken four rakes, and then we're scrambling. Well, I think so. last time we did it, we did do one per family, yeah. and we ran out. Yeah, but it was that was a madhouse. Yeah, that was so the biggest. Yeah. We don't want a madhouse. But people were yeah. very happy with the number of clams they got. I mean, yeah. They got a lot yeah. of clams. Yeah. If you didn't get clams, you weren't, I don't know, you weren't in the water. I mean, yeah, I didn't have anyone easy. come back to me and complain. They, they all dug in, but it was still yeah. easy. It was, they were spread you nicely, and... Very easy to find. Uh, also, other I know the blooms are prepping their boats to start spreading their shell, and Jimmy Bloom had mentioned uh, about putting some shell in Ash Creek for us. So I'll, I'm going to be talking to him in the next couple of days and asking him if he's talking about some of his shell, or our shell. Mm -hmm. But either way. If he's willing to run up, run a boat up in Ash Creek and put some shell on for us, I say we take advantage of that. Do we get to designate where it goes, or is he just going to put it where? Um, so what we'll do is we'll get like a, a map or something and just mark off some areas where yeah. we think, right. which I think should all be on the Fairfield side. <laughs> and then. Um, but no, we just talked about the sand spit, putting some on there. Do we want we to could, that? So that might have to be done by hand Got in it. the back of the sand spit because okay. that's a really small creek back there. Got it. Um, if we went in at high tide, I could put my boat will go in there because it's a skiff. Um, or we could use the town boat and run back up in there and throw some shell in there. Yeah. It, it still helps us, you know, yeah. even if the oysters are growing yeah, on the other absolutely. side of an imaginary line. Load it up. Um, we were also talking about registration. Of the oh, that's it. Tim Bishop. <coughs> we yes, need sir. to know if our boat needs to be registered. So when I was at the um, Pequot Yacht Club commissioning, uh, harbor, the harbor commission was there. The harbor master, Brian Leclerc, was there and said, you know, your boat's not registered. And I said, yeah, I know. And he said, why not? And I said, because it doesn't have to be. But I'm not so sure about that. So I went on to the motor vehicle site and tried to find anything about it. Do you know anything about that? I don't. Um, but I could. I could. I could ask around. I don't know why it wouldn't have to be. I mean, we don't yeah, think we get any special permission. DMV requires all municipal vehicles yeah. to be registered. And yeah. I I do know because I looked, but I looked at the, and I haven't talked to the fire chief about it, but the the fire department. Inflatable in the number. yacht yard is not numbered. Not numbered. Yeah, yeah. What about the other town boats? So we should look at the police boats and what's that boat uh, that the, the barge? Yeah, the that's barge. Like a, the barge. That's for pulling the moorings. Yeah. Um, is that registered? We should see because it's not like we don't leave the harbor. We do leave the harbor and no. go out into boat traffic. The, the DMV is very. It, any motorized boat right. have to have a have to have be numbered. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say that Tom, I asked Tom about it, and he was under the assumption that it was a municipal boat, and he talked said he talked to John Hay about it, who works for DEP, and uh, he said it didn't need to be registered. But I think we need to confirm that. Because if it needs to be registered, it should be registered, or at least numbered. Agreed. I'll look yeah. into it tomorrow. You never know. You know, if something happened and it's not registered, it could cause problems for the town. So, all right. Thank you, Tim. Anything else on other? I don't 
think so. So it's June right now, and uh, soon it'll be July and August. We do have the opportunity to have a meeting, you know, outside of this little space we're in, if we wanted to maybe have a little our, a meeting with a little bit of, I could do a discada full of clams, yeah. steamed clams and shrimp and mussels, and then we could have our meeting directly afterwards. If you guys are interested, if if everyone can, if we can come up with either July or August meetings, maybe we could move our meeting. We'd have to put a notification out, obviously, mm -hmm. that we're going to move our meeting um, in case the public wanted to show. The public would only be there for the actual meeting, not for the... Pretty meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if that interests anyone, um, we should all figure out if we can do it for July or August. And where would we do it? Um, well, we could do it at Sasco. We could do it at Jennings. We could do it at Pine Creek. Mm -hmm. Probably Sasco. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Um, you know, we start at meet at six o'clock or something, and uh, I have a, what is this? A discata is is a, a plow disc without the hole in the bottom, and I have a lid for it. And what I do is I put in the butter and the clams and the onions and the bacon and shrimp and mussels, and then I have a burner, and you steam this whole mess up, and I have a little ring I put on the table and set this thing down with some bread and some plates, and everyone goes to town on it. Uh, it comes out really good. It's a great visual, and... Uh, you can see I did it at Sasco for a magazine once, and there's some great pictures if you guys want me to forward you that. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, we, we could do that since we're all, everyone seems to get along pretty well, and, you know, we all like to, it seems like we like to have some fun. Yeah. So what do you think, Sean? Yeah, I'd be in for that 100%. And we'll bring a grill and throw a steak on it for Tim. Oh, we need to bring a grill, right? We're going to Sasco. Just bring some charcoal oh, yeah, grill, grill and yeah. grill it right there. We'll just bring a piece of red meat for Tim. It yeah. works for me. What's your favorite cut, Tim? <laughs> uh, anything that's, that's still mooing. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we, if everyone agrees, we can try to get that ha yeah. to happen. Do we want to? Yeah. So we'll just. We uh, have to have a rain date. No, I can't do can't. July, but I could do August. All right, I mean. so let's try it. Maybe we'll shoot for the August meeting. Um, Which is so we can't do rain dates because if we change our meeting date, we have to put, work. like, a notice out. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right. So we'd have to put a notice that we're actually changing the where the meeting is. Just put that's the not a problem. Tent down. Yeah. There yeah. you go. All right, any other other? Other other. Any other other? No? All right. Nope. Who's going to make the motion? Any public comment? No public Anybody here. Anybody from the public here? No public on the phone, right? Nope. I move we adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <laughs>